Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, friends, today is July the 30th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of a small book that you've probably heard of, but you're not very familiar with, most likely, and it's the book of Habakkuk. Now, unlike most of the prophetical writings, which are all written to the nation of Israel, about the nation of Israel, and the sin against their God, the book of Habakkuk seems to be more of a petition to the Lord, a one-man's diary of the injustice that he feels is taking place in the land and why God is not responding. So you could say in some ways that this small book is more of a prayer. And so what I would like to do this morning is I would like to highlight just a couple of things out of this book that can relate so easily and so much to our lives as children of the living God who look around this world, see all the injustices, see all the unfairness, see all the bloodshed and war, all the bigotry and prejudice, and wonder why it is that God allows such things. And at the same time, we offer prayers unto the Lord, and we see little or no results. Why is this? Well, this is not only the hearts of many who have come before us, friends. Some of the greatest men of God that we have had upon the earth have felt the same lament, have been in the same situation, men that we would think surely would have God's ear, and yet when you read their writings, you find that they never heard from God. Nothing ever miraculous or significant took place from a spiritual standpoint from where they heard from the Lord. And the reason for that is in this book as well. Now, as I mentioned, Habakkuk is concerned about the injustice, and what I mean by that is slavery is taking place of his people. There's economic deception that's going on, which is keeping the people down. We also see the people themselves not turning to God and crying out to him for his help, but they are involved in idolatry and the worship of other gods, violence against their own people, and all under the direct leadership of the leaders of Israel, who are corrupt in and of themselves. And so having all this in mind, let's just look at a couple of verses. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 2. Habakkuk says, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence, and yet thou wilt not save. Have you ever felt like that before, friends? I know that I have. To be honest, I know that I currently feel that way. I cry unto the heavens, and yet it seems like the heavens are made of brass. He continues in verse 12 and 13. He says, Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? And then verse 13. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously? And holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. I know that many feel this way about ISIS. I'm sure many felt this way about Hitler. When the Christian's heart cries, Oh God, how long will you allow such violence to take place on the earth? And look what the Almighty says in verse 2. It says, The Lord answered me and said, Write this vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So it tells us right there that God is not only aware of the violence upon this earth, the injustice upon this earth, but there is a very specific point of time to come where God will deal with these issues. That's what appointed means. This vision that I'm going to show you, Habakkuk, is for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. 
And so God is basically saying, don't give up. Be patient. Be confident that I am at work in this situation. And there is an appointed time where my judgment will come forth. But until then, you just abide. You just trust in me. And that's what he says in verse 4. He says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. In other words, those who call themselves leaders among you, the lifted up, the exalted ones, those whom you look up to, there's nothing right about the way that they're living. My people, he says, shall live by faith. They will count on the promise. I've told you my judgment will come. I've told you that there will be a day of the Lord. And until then, you are simply to live by faith, believing what I've said to be true and obeying what I have said to be true. And then look what Habakkuk says at the end of this small prayer. Chapter 3, verse 17. He says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. In other words, even if I do not see the blessing of God around me, if drought and famine and pestilence devour the land, look what he says in verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. No matter what happens to me on this earth, no matter how distant God seems to be, I will rejoice in the Lord and I will joy in the God of my salvation. No matter how deprived we as a people become, no matter if they torture us, enslave us, or kill us, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Even if I lose everything I own, even if I lose everyone I love, even if I am on the bed of death itself, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The just shall live by faith, friends. We don't live based upon what we see. Our faith is invisible. Our faith is intangible. We cannot touch it. We cannot feel it. We cannot see it. We cannot smell it. And yet, we believe. We rejoice in the Lord, and we take joy in the God of our salvation. Friends, this is a lesson we all need to learn. This is a prayer that we never need forget. Because when those dark and dreary days come, this is what we're to remind ourselves. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, and the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there will be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will look beyond the events of this life, the affairs of this life, the troubles of this life, and I will look unto my God where all my hope lies. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I love you. I pray that your journey is blessed today as you walk with Jesus. I pray that you begin to elevate yourself from this world and that you begin to see into another dimension that most don't even know exist and that you can say with Habakkuk, no matter what comes my way, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah, friends. Well, now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.